everybody, Coach P. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. And please like, subscribe, and share this with your friends so I can help build this network up. Today's topic of discussion, anabolic steroids in the 1980s. What was it like? I'm fortunate enough to be a product of the 1980 bodybuilding scene. I won many, many shows, placed high in many, many other shows, and had a very successful career before I retired from it. The steroid scene back in the day was very simple. It was not complicated. There was only so many different anabolic substances around. You had DECA that came in two, uh, two ML bottles, might have been one cc or two cc. You had Dorobolin, testosterones, your Anabars were small little football shaped pills. I believe they were 2.5 milligrams. Your Winstrols were two milligrams, little pink pills. D-Balls with a little five milligram tablets. Equipoise came in 30, mil, uh, 30 ml bottles, if I remember correctly, sometimes 50. Um, Winstrol was also an injectable. And then you had substances that were better than some of the others. You had your Sustanon 250, which was a preloaded syringe. You had your Parabolin slash Trenhex and the ampules, Primabolin and ampules. Very different era when it came to the anabolics. The very simple, basic stuff compared to what's out there today. The drug cycles of back then were very, I'm not gonna say sketchy, they were very minimal because the, the steroids were used to help build your body up, to bring in the symmetrical, classic look. You were training on minimal amounts. It, you know, my personal experience, my personal use, you know, being very transparent, 400 milligrams of test, maybe an ML or two or a DECA, some Anadrol, depending on what time of the year it was, off season or on season. But my basic foundation was built long before I took anabolic steroids. So I had a foundation. I didn't build my frame off of steroids. The champs of yesteryear, the 80s, didn't build their physiques off of steroids. Unlike the competitors of today, these guys are just morphosized. They're mutant, morphosized, blocky. Something I don't, I don't appreciate the men's open bodybuilding anymore. It's sad to say because that's where I originated in, but I don't appreciate it. I'm more the classic guy. I'll always be the classic guy. But the physiques back then were very symmetrical. They were big. You had some big guys that held a lot of good quality muscle. They didn't take heavy drugs, and the physiques showed it because they were not out of proportion. Yes, some guys had better proportions than others depending on a person's genetics, but still, you did not have these mass monsters. The guys of yesteryear were not taking heavy, heavy dosages of drugs. It was unheard of to take a thousand milligrams of testosterone a week. I mean, I would have been scared to death to run that much test a week in my early 20s, you know, late teens, early 20s. That would be ludicrous. But that's what kids are doing now. They make it to a local show. They're running 8,000 milligrams of test on top of a whole slew of other stuff to get to a local show. What's going to happen if you go up the level? You know, local, state, national. You, you might be dead before you get to that level because you're using so much gear so hard and so heavy. Guys weren't dying back then. You never heard of liver disease and kidney failure, you know, heart attack. You, you didn't hear about it. We also didn't have social media around back then. You heard very little gossip. You know, when, when, when the Olympia was on, everyone would wonder, you know, who won the Olympia? Today's the Olympia, who won? Unless you had a connection in California, you weren't going to find out until it hit the magazine three or four months later. Today, it's social media. Everyone's out on social media telling their drug cycles. It's like going to confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I've taken 500 milligrams of test today. Come on, people, seriously? You're throwing all this information out there on social media, what you're using, what you're taking, how much of this, how much of that. It's crazy. It's crazy. And to look at the people that are putting this information out there, I question 
How long have you even been training? I started training at 13 years old. I didn't do my first drug cycle, if people want to call it a cycle, until I was 18. And I experimented. Drugs back in the 80s were not like it was. You know, I, I used growth hormone before I got ready for the universe. It was $700 a kit back in the late 80s. Who the hell's got $700 to blow on a kit of growth? I couldn't run the cycle the way I wanted. I had to use minimal dosages. Two, three, I used tops. To take it for the long haul to get me where I wanted to be. Ridiculous compared to today's standards where guys are using a full bottle of growth a day. Very different times. And if you look at the physiques of the 1980s, part of the 90s also, compared to the physiques of today, today's open men's bodybuilding is horrible. For a guy to be five foot seven, weighing close to 300 pounds on stage is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Bring back the 1980s bodybuilding. In my opinion, men's open class bodybuilding is eventually going to run its course and be gone. And you're going to have the classic bodybuilding class dominating men's bodybuilding. The writing is on the wall. Those physiques are awesome. The men's bodybuilding open class, look at the physiques that are up there. There's not a single guy up there with a small tapered waist. Everyone's got big blocky waists. The bigger you get, the blockier you're going to get, and your waist is going to get wider. Look at the physiques of the 1980s. Everybody had big quads, small waists that tapered up to a nice V-shape. People, you make a decision what was the better era. I know what my decision is. It was a safer era. The 1980s, the best era for bodybuilding, and I'm proud to say I was part of that. You guys have a good day. Peace out.